What is going on, Wildlife Warriors? You just hopped out of whatever it is that you were doing anywhere in the world and jumped right into one of the most biodiverse, saturated, incredibly beautiful, colorful, charismatic countries on this planet. We are live in Costa Rica right now. And what you are looking at right there is a red-eyed tree frog. This, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the most charismatic, photographed, iconic, any other adjective that I can't think of right now, amphibians in the wildlife kingdom. And we're trying to, he is wily, and we are in the wild right now. We're trying to bring him to you. Like I said, wherever it is you are in the world right now, and this beautiful, beautiful young male right here. Oh, <laughs> he's trying to jump onto your set right now. I think, how's that look? Do I have him there? You got him. All right, let me see if I can bring him around and get a little bit of a better shot for you guys right there. Look at how beautiful, how tiny this young male is right now. And like I said, we are live in Costa Rica with this red-eyed tree frog here at Green Teak Wildlife Refuge. And if you guys wanna to come to Costa Rica and see these beautiful, incredible creatures for yourself, we're only about a two and a half hour drive away from the capital in San Jose. And if you come down here, you can witness these beautiful creatures in the flesh. We're trying to bring them live to you, but it doesn't do it justice. You gotta come out here and see it for yourself. And like I said, we're in Costa Rica. My name is Felipe D'Andrade. We are out here for season two of Untamed on Nat Geo Wild and National Geographic. And I've got with me another charismatic, colorful creature <laughs> native to Costa Rica. I'm here with Cesar. Cesar? Hi, Felipe. How are How you? How are you doing, brother? Pura vida, man. Pura, Pura vida. vida. What does that mean again? Pura vida means like a good times, like uh, everything is good. like. Uh, we use every, Pura Vida for everything in here. For everything. For everything. I've got for it all wrong. For say hello, for say goodbye, for say Pura Vida frog, you know, like that. It's I've gotten it all wrong. Eyes. I've been trying to order Pura Vida at the restaurant. So you tell yeah. me it doesn't work that way? It works. <laughs> all right. So can you tell the people at home a little bit more about this wonderful creature right yeah, here? That is a beautiful red eyes tree frog. Like you say before, it's a charismatic frog for Costa Rica. Here in the wildlife refuge, in the Green Tick Wildlife Refuge, it's easy to find that one throughout the year. Okay? Wow. The mating season of that frog is probably from May to uh, June. From okay? May to June. June. But here in the Green Tick Wildlife Refuge, we found throughout the year. Okay, they made it throughout the year. And you can see those beautiful red peepers on this guy. Yeah. What would you say is the most sought after creature when you guys, when you guys get visitors coming down from anywhere to Green Teak specifically, what do they want to see? They want to see the beautiful and, the, and this beautiful red eyes, you know, the red eyes tree frog. Another, thing, another name I like to use for that one is uh, Gaudi tree frog. Gaudi tree Gaudi. frog. Gaudi. Remember the Anthony Gaudi? The oh, yeah, 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 that yeah. Is, that is the reason they, they use for in a lot of the jobs. Awesome, yeah, awesome. It's beautiful frog. It's uh, um, one of the most amazing frogs of Costa Rica. Yeah, absolutely. And it's one of the most photographed, right? That's People right. come from all over the world just to see this young gentleman that right here. Frog, yeah. That makes him famous. Yeah. I've got my own show on Nat Geo Wild, and I don't have the pool that this young, beautiful actually, frog has right actually, here. Actually, Philip, you know that it's a male. We know that for their size. Usually really? Usually the females is maybe a half inch bigger than this male. Wow. Actually, that guy is really uh, vocalizing in the... Uh, under story forwards, you know, try to try to uh, call in their mates. Yeah. Yes, and when they are around, the female shows the best singer, and that's. And so that's, that's what we're hearing all around us right now, right? Like you yeah, said, it was the a mating lot of season. Frog, here. Yes, the mating season, right? Okay, so we're technically in the green season, correct? In the green season, in the green season, that's right. You, you know, we um, uh, here is throughout the year happens throughout the year. Really, yeah, throughout yeah. the year. Throughout the year. And this is not the only beautiful creature we have here, isn't no, that right? We have a lot of for, a lot of uh, creators in here. You know, we have probably uh, some other kind of frogs and maybe some snakes around. Yeah. yeah, and like we said, we're live here in Costa Rica. This place is one of the most biologically diverse places you can visit in the world. Over five hundred thousand creatures and most of them in this very very eclectic wonderful mountainous region Jim what did you say we're standing in right now we're in a humid tropical wet forest humid tropical wet forest awesome and that's Jim he's the owner of Green Cheek Wildlife Refuge and we are here here Cesar I'll give this <laughs> okay. wonderful creature back to you over here okay well, 
All right, That's perfect. <laughs> and uh, we're kind of sludging through the water right now. It's it it. It rains here in Costa Rica, and that's what makes this place so green, so lush. Brian's selling everything out. This guy's got a beard like you wouldn't believe, and if it gets wet, he can't get dry for a week. So he's braving through this water right now just to show you guys these creatures at home. So Cesar, let's go see what else we can find. So for all of you watching at home, if you want to write in and if you want to ask Cesar a question, he's the man to talk to. If you want to see come in Costa Rica, come talk to this guy. So you got something else over there? Trout, trout that leaf over there. Where's that? Oh, nice There's score! A beautiful snake over there. Can we can we can we get him a little bit closer so people can see him? Oh, that there's one right here, here too. Over here is another Dude, one. Brian, there's one right there. Ooh. It is. Nice. And what are we looking at right there? Actually, it's the vine snake. That's the vine snake. Actually, he's looking for the uh, uh, mass of eggs on the frog. He's looking for you the know, eggs. The, um, a uh, froggy like the froggy we saw before, uh -huh. the um, red eyes tree frog. Ah, so that's probably the... laying eggs at the at the at the leaf around, and actually that vine snake is looking for that egg. Really? Yeah. And this is so the uh, they dinner. also call them the blunt headed snake, right? Blunt headed snake. That's right. Wow. What? Are they, how big, big are his eyes, eyes over yeah. there? That's incredible. Yeah, it's amazing the big eyes. And see the the membrana. They use a membrana for make that. Movement. Really? So yeah. why specifically are we finding these creatures at night and not during the day? Because they are adapted to survive at night. You know, they they know the frogs are active at night time. Yeah. And that is the, the, the food for the snake. That, that makes the sense. So the, the predator is going the where predator, the prey is, the, huh? the predators go out at night time. And is this a venomous snake? Not really. No, of course not. It's, it's a, got it's small not, traces you know, of venom? Uh, that is just a paralyzed saliva in case they had to paralyze a small uh, lizard or something like that. But not really uh, deadly for us. In Costa Rica, we have only less than 25 different uh, kind of snakes are really deadly for humans. Wow, and look at that reach that he's yeah. got. Wait, say that one more time. You said how many are deadly here in Costa Rica? More than 25 are really deadly. More than, more than 25 are deadly. Yes. That's wild. So uh, this is deadly a place that us. you definitely want to watch your step when you're in the middle of nowhere. You are in the thick of it when you come here to Costa Rica, and that's why you want to come and talk to this guy, because he'll show you these animals at a safe distance. Yeah. Is that beautiful, yeah? So what is he doing when he flicks his tongue Actually, out like that? Actually, he's trying to smell it, what is going on around. Really? You know? yeah, maybe, it's, uh, maybe it's a little freaky now for the light and everything, so we don't touch that one and anything like that. Yeah. But see, they try to smell it, what is going on around. Yeah. And you can see just how adapted he is for nighttime behavior. See that? That is the adaptation. They're yeah. looking for a new a place and you know, use their body like that, like a stanchion. They have wow. a kind of membrana in their, in, their, in their throat. And I don't know if you guys saw just how big those eyes were, but 26% of the blunt headed's head is actually made up of its eyes. And like Cesar was saying, that's why it makes it such a sufficient, did I say sufficient? Such an efficient hunter at nighttime. And when they flick their tongue out like that, that's what they're smelling for is any potential prey. So this is incredible right now. We, what are these behind us right here? Some eggs. What the hell is it? Do we have some eggs here, Cesar? Uh -huh. Where? Right over here. Oh, Brian, nice score. <laughs> Brian spotted some tadpole eggs. I don't think it's a fertilizer. He's yeah, not just is, pretty that behind that the camera. Eggs of the eggs of the hourglass frog. So this is from the hourglass frog. Hourglass frog, frog yeah. Okay. That is the food for the snake. So how many, do you know how many eggs that they'll have up to a time? Hmm, I know, but I know the frog or the couple of frogs could be like maybe five or seven uh, or seven uh, close like that. You know? Yeah? Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. And why, spe night. why specifically are we finding them here? <laughs> why? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm losing my mind out here. It's about 11 o'clock in Costa Rica. We've been working all day, but nothing brings us more satisfaction than bringing you guys. Oh, thanks, Brian. Nothing <laughs> brings us more satisfaction than bringing you guys, wherever you are in the world, right here into the wild in Costa Rica. And so, like I was asking you, Cesar, why are all of these tadpole eggs right above the water like this? Yeah, actually, they are really safe around the water, you know, it's waiting for the rain come and all of these drop into the water and continue their development. You see right over there is another. Oh, we've got, oh, eggs. we've got another, okay. And the frog nice, too. Nice, See, that is amazing. There is the frog who laid that egg. Okay, so this is what Cesar was talking about right then, is that the tadpoles, or the frogs will actually lay the eggs on a leaf 
over the pond and the reason that is is because when the tadpoles are developed and when the eggs are developed enough they'll fall into the water and develop as tadpoles so we're walking through the water right now watching where we step because we are surrounded by tadpoles from all of the frogs that are around here costa rica is famous for a lot of things specifically it's frogs do we have some more over there brian i think these are um uh, red eye eggs brian coming in <laughs> hot with the fine places are these Nice. Those are hourglass. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Are these no, that is of the hourglass. Uh, hourglass. hourglass, right? hourglass That's hourglass. the hourglass. Right. And so these right. are a little bit more developed, huh? Mm-hmm. A little bit more development than the other ones. And see, is into the jelly actually. You know ah, that jelly okay. already protecting the the tadpoles for the um, for the dried. Oh, really? You know, for the dried at daytime. Okay, so this jelly is actually actually mm -hmm. acting as a separation from see the this. tadpoles in the. See this. Wow, so you can you guys can actually see the tadpoles they developing tadpoles inside of there, huh? It's crazy. It's crazy. We need a macro lens to show you guys completely <laughs> at home, but I can actually see the eyes starting to form. I can see all of that physical chemistry start to take place inside of the tadpole right now, and then it's gonna fall to the water. But what I don't see in those tadpoles are this incredible mustache that's on yours truly. Get in there. If you guys wanna grab a screenshot of that, that's all you. I know you want it as a wallpaper. All right, Brian, too close for the people at home. They don't wanna hang on this face too long. So Cesar, <laughs> what, like I said before, what else what else do we have going on here we have some more developing tadpoles yeah some more development and now these tadpoles are really um toxic for for other kind of tadpoles and for uh, and for us too could oh be, really could be causes of reaction not really deadly for us but could be a uh, sudden a toxic reaction and they are toxic for other tadpoles so that means if they fall into this really small uh, war pond they yeah. will be in, um, try to eliminate the other types oh, really? of species over there, yeah. Okay, so but not that say, we would want to, but definitely don't want to get into those toxins, huh? <laughs> not something that we want to put in our body. Yes. Actually, man, right, I think right over there is the uh, adult of the hourglass frog. Ah, we haven't... I don't know if you saw that before. Okay, so, oh, okay, I see it right there, right? Yep. And is that a male or a female? Look like a male. Okay. But the males are always smaller, in frogs always, the males are smaller than the... Than okay, the so you can tell right away depending on the size that that's a male, huh? Yes, and of course they was uh, vocalizing, they have a succular side who was vocalizing and that is the reason they... Uh, wow. I know that's a male. And like you said, that that's an hourglass tree frog, and if you guys are just checking in and if you're looking at this beautiful young male, what makes it an hourglass tree frog is that physical makeup, that pattern, on its back looks exactly like an hourglass and uh, Brian's kind of big spooning me right now holding the light and the camera trying to get in close so we really put our bodies on the line you don't want to be big spooned by a beard that prickly um, let me tell you from not experience so this young male right here Cesar did you say that he's looking for a female yes that's right actually he's trying to vocalize it you know at the middle elevation over the war pond uh, just uh, just uh, calling the, the females, so the, awesome. the girlfriend. Okay. <laughs> and how long does the mating season last here for amphibians in Costa Rica? Okay, that happens through the for some species through the rainy season, for other species it's right at the wet season. That is the reason I said before. Here is throughout the year that happens. Ah. Okay. So in here, or oh, that uh, for that specifically frog, the mating season is happening now, right now in the green season. Okay, wonderful. And like we saw with the snakes, they have big bulging eyes too, huh? Uh-huh, that's right. And the snake knows that for us, that is happening with the frogs. Really? Mm -hmm. So like we talked about before, the frogs are here and that's what's bringing the snakes around. And you can see that this is the perfect breeding ground for any frog. We're standing in water right now. Once those eggs develop, they're gonna fall as tadpoles into the water and they're gonna bless this universe with more amphibians. How awesome is that? Pura vida. Pura vida. Pura vida. Pura vida. Pura vida. Pura vida. <laughs> thank you. And we've got, uh, we want to thank you guys wherever you are in the world right now for joining me and Cesar. Cesar, you're always awesome, Pura vida. man. Thank you, man. Tell the people where they can come to Costa Rica and see you and have the, you take them out to the wild. Yes, please. Uh, what well, you want to visit to us at the Green Tick Wildlife Refuge, we are the actual all the nice, you know, you will be part of the magic of the nature in this place. Thank you very much, Philippe, for the coming The magic to of us. the nature. And yes, and thank you for making that happen. So really, oh, yeah. Man, thank you. Heck yeah. Pura Sorry. vida. <laughs> Pura vida. So also, I wanted to tell you guys, like I said, we're here filming season two of Untamed. 
Under the Lights are rolling out right now. We've filmed some incredible creatures here at Green Teak in super slow motion. And as those videos are rolling out, if you want to watch them, comment, let us know what you think about them. Let, them, let me know how awesome my mustache is. I, my personality could always use a boosting. Well, comments are welcome. I can't even talk right now. It's late here in Costa Rica. We're standing in water surrounded by frogs trying to mate. It's been a little kinky. And we're also joined by Jim McKenzie. Doug, and Doug, and Doug's up there. Dougie Fresh. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for joining us in the middle of the night here in Costa Rica. Pura Vida. Pura Vida. See you.